cat that we had, um, she fucking hated Xavier, and Xavier loved her so much. Which, he, we named her Cat because it's the only thing he could call her. <laughs> so he would just be like, Cat, 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 and like run up to her, and she'd be like, oh, fuck no, and just like sprint anywhere she could. <laughs> <laughs> but a dog did try and attack him in the yard one day while we were living in Reedland, mm. and she dive bombed the dog's face and cut his eye open. Nice. Right? All right, then. She was just a random feral that we just started feeding because she was too thin. Oh. She got a little too hungry. Actually, I got the flu and ended up in the hospital when I came back. Grandma said she took into her, taken her to a shelter, and someone else adopted her. Oh. That's neat. Yeah. Because I was in the hospital for two weeks, and she was like, well, you're not going to care for this cat because you're in the hospital. I'm giving her away. So she took her to a kill shelter, hoping mm. she would be killed because she hated her. Right. Damn. And she got adopted instead. Ha. Yeah, I was like, in fuck the you. face. And uh, welcome to the first word. I guess we've got a few episodes of Camp Camp to cover, um, and then there's some Just internal RT stuff to to talk about. I don't know if you guys have heard anything about the animation, animator controversy. No, what? Going, going on? Okay, so I guess we'll start with the, with this. Yeah, might as well. All right. I mean, it's fucking, hot off the presses, apparently. I and mean, try to avoid leftist politics on the first word, but so... <laughs> I forget the name of the uh, of the website, but apparently a bunch of old animators just review bombed RT for um, for crunch. Basically, they basically they they said that with the with the free overtime. That RT is getting out of their animators, they're basically getting like a third of Ruby or Ginlock or whatever for free. Wow. Yeah. Cause there's no, you know, fucking laws and stuff. There's no overtime if you have in Texas, I guess, if you have a salary of like forty-seven thousand or or more. Mm -hmm. But they're working them like eighty hours a week for like months on end on uh, on the on crunch time for for animation and um crunch time of that much animation i mean i guess that they did have a no 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 crunched as in like in games you know crunch oh yeah oh, okay not they're also right the right named show right that we yeah. all want to come back right that hopefully will yeah bring back crunch time get the get the animators a break fuck but um <laughs> and texas is one of the few states where you can do and this is a big reason why funimation and a lot of places like that are there it's one of the few states where you can work in the film industry and not be unionized so okay. so the work the workers aren't aren't unionized the animators aren't unionized at rt um, some of the people individually are in the union because of being on bigger things and things they've like collaborated with people on, but as a whole, it's not, they're not unionized. And, um, Matt put out a statement earlier today, Matt Holm, CEO of Versi Teeth, put out a statement earlier today. Um, he addressed the, uh, the issue of poor of poor management and like t scheduling and everything that people complained about there wasn't anything really said as far as the overtime and compensation is is concerned um gray haddock who was the direct was head of animation and um and the creative lead on Genlock is stepping down as head of animation um and I feel like they kind of threw him under the bus a little bit because there's like, it's just too much on Gray's, Gray's plate. He wasn't really able to, to manage a team of that size. We've been, we've been working on this for a, for a few months. And like, yeah, okay, so their hand probably got, got shown a little bit. But how did it get to this point in the first place? And 
I'm still a little bit sore, even though I don't blame Rooster Teeth. I'm still a little bit sore for the way that Sugar, Sugar Pine? Pine was handled and then just dropped. Yeah. Um, because they weren't profitable, which, I mean, I, I get it, but I don't know. I, I watch Rooster Teeth because I expect a little bit better. Like, yeah, they're, they're able to pay their employees whatever, 47000 a year and work them as much as they, as they want to or legally can. Just because they legally can do it doesn't mean that it's right. And if you're going to build your brand on, on being a family and that sense of community, then at least take care of the people behind the scenes that's making it, making it possible. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Although... To that end, family are the only people that expect you to work for free, for the most part. There you go. Um, That's why it's a family. No, I, I just prefer that it would remain a family and not like a family in italics. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, that's that's that. And I don't know. I mean, I know, I know my solution would would be to turn Rooster Teeth over to to the employees and yeah and let let them run it cuz i mean if any company could really run with that kind of model it would be Rooster Teeth like if any any company that would be, would benefit from dissolving the hierarchy and just here like we have this much money for animation this year this much money for live action you guys play around with ideas and go go do things. Go make whatever whatever you want to make, and like whatever the community responds to. I think Rooster Teeth would actually get some zest back because I feel um, every everything is getting a little too like grandiose, honestly, for me with with Rooster Teeth. Like I love I love Genlock. And day five and all of that, but you you don't get as much of like you're never gonna see another season of something like Nature Town again, you know? Yeah. Like, what? you just hold this. That um, uh, that quirky internet thing has, yeah. has been kind of kind yeah. of replaced. Internet gold. Right. Kind of yeah. low production value, lots of heart, really unique concept. Right. Just something you throw at the wall and then it works. Mm -hmm. Not everything has to be a huge concept with, with a ton of animation and like all of this money and time spent into it. Sometimes you can put out something that's you know, right. sparse and reflects a kind of like a modesty and a mm -hmm. lack of pretension that stuff like, like Nature Town did. Stuff like, uh, you know, early RVB. Right. And I think to a, to a certain degree, as, as much as you can with, with animation, I think that Camp Camp is probably the closest yeah. of the current, like, slot to, to get there. Like, it's right. unas, unassuming. Right. And, but a fairly unique... Um, Unique direction and uh, concept. Yeah, absolutely. I actually, conceptually, I really am looking forward to talking about these last two episodes because they hit on a lot of uh, tropes and they bring up uh, some really specific things that that I, I want to mention. Yeah, well, we're, I'm guessing we're um, about a quarter of the way through season four of Camp Camp. Good God, it's been four seasons. We when we started fandom, they were on season two. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Damn. Yep. I think they had just capped season two. Remember we. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think when we started, they were just going into Ruby or RVB. I don't remember like what what they were what they were just getting into. I think it was RVB because yeah, you had to fast track yeah, to catch yeah, up yeah. on RVB. Yeah. I watched the first four seasons and. One sitting, basically. <laughs> Man, Which was fandom, is, that means, is about one and a half, give or take. Mm -hmm. Camp camp seasons long. Hmm. Fair enough. 
But it's a lot, lo lot longer than that if you go by episode count. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this this season, I have, I'm not sure how I feel about it. I mean, I love these episodes. Like, but it's just like, I don't know where the overarching like uh, trajectory of of character is going to be this season, but I don't know if I could have in the earlier ones with, you know, how much the the first one kind of showed us David and then and then Max and everything. Yeah. Like I don't really know what the um, what the payoff is going to be for for this season. And there haven't been any like emotional hitters yet. Yeah. I mean, Nerf, kind of. Yeah, kind of. As much as you can relate to Nerf. Right. Like he's kind of a... Yeah. Uh, Maybe that's what this season's going to be more interesting on. Yeah, some of, the, some of the side characters and stuff. I mean, we got in two, like, fairly Nerf episodes. Yeah. Oh, man. Can we get, st get started talking about Nerf clones? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. He, he His character got so much... Fucking space to play around in yeah. in this fucking episode. It also tore away a lot of some like world building rules that I thought Camp Camp had, mm -hmm. like some because they they fucking had a black hole. They cloned a dude. Yeah, like so many times. Yeah, <laughs> Neil is apparently such a hyper genius that he can make a fucking largish hadron yeah. collider. Yeah, I mean, as crazy as it got before, it was like Nikki's assumed. Superpowers, right? You know, being able to commune with nature. <laughs> and then Neil's and just, a fucking super genius. Yeah. Max actually has feelings. That's it. That's the whole show. Right. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, fucking Nerf has to engineer his friendship, and the only person he's capable of being friends with is himself. Right. But then <laughs> <laughs> he realizes that creating more of himself just makes every everything shittier. You right. Know? And he actually, he gets what he wants. And he, he gets the satisfaction of, of having friends. And mm -hmm. it kind of takes away his edge. Right. He's completely incapable then of being the bully that it was before he renounced bullying. Yeah. Like it was his religion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help you. I renounced it. It doesn't matter. Oh, man. But there's this... Um, I, I, we said we could, wouldn't get into leftist politics, so I want to fashion this weird. I mean, we've already hit it. Yeah, yeah. okay, it's fine. Uh, he creates a, like a fascist movement throughout the. Because yeah. uh, that's kind of what I, I. If we look at Nerf as like a uh, an aggressive ideology, they kind of spread like uh, diseases. Yeah. And sometimes those degenerate as they get more and more right. expansive. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, <laughs> as the clones. Have this this yeah. breakdown. It's it's you know it shows how like an idea, which at its core is very defensible, even if it is completely shitty. Mm -hmm. um, it can be defensible logically, even if it's completely morally repugnant. Right. And so it's like nerf. It's like all of that that uh, the logic holding in uh, mm -hmm. together his very fucking ridiculous personality. Right. It gets pulled away as the nerfs get more and more stupid and capable of being complete nerf. Yeah. It just leaves behind his like id, mm -hmm. <laughs> just his just his shitty fucking instincts. Mm -hmm. He pulls Max out. One of the shitty nerfs pulls Max out of the uh, isolation chamber, yep. yeah. and it's just like <laughs> water go away or whatever he says. Yeah. <laughs> like, fucking Max's line after that was, hmm, "This must be the feeling right before someone kills someone, <laughs> <laughs> or right before a serial killer realizes they're a serial killer." <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, shitty nerf just his his main thrust was just like how can I fuck up anything that's directly in front of me and it got to the point where his motivation came to I'm going to take the water out of this container and that'll satisfy me <laughs> right. just because he wanted it in there. And then like in the end he has to like destroy his he has to bully himself. Yeah. Into a black hole. Yeah. We see what Nerf is insecure about yeah. uh, to his core. Yeah. What his, what his actual weaknesses are. That he's a ginger. His dad 
Never of course, loved daddy him. issues. Daddy issues. Had to be that. Daddy issues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Man titties. <laughs> if it was it, there were five, four or five things. Yeah, all the classic things that would uh, right. <laughs> cause you to be ginger passionate. fat man titties daddy issues. Um, Mom didn't do. <laughs> but like oh. the daddy issues, he like goes back and starts a super saiyan. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it blows them just close enough to Neil's <laughs> machine that he. Oh man. It's some some sick line about dad never calling. Oh, I, can't, I wish I could remember it, yeah. but it's. Oh, Nerf is the king of bullies. Um, there was something about talking to someone's dad, and it was like, but it won't happen because your dad never calls. Yeah. <laughs> and then <sighs> Nikki broke the switch. Mm -hmm. She claimed she broke it. She just offered that up. Right. Like, all she did was pull it, and then it was... <laughs> She's like, I'm a lab assistant. <laughs> I broke it. <laughs> Which is basically me at work. <laughs> yeah. N Nikki as... Nikki doing anything with Neil is always my, is always my favorite time in, in camp camp. <laughs> yeah, they're the best. Neil would be content to stare at a wall if it meant he didn't like risk anything. Yeah. yeah. And Nikki's the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. Would rather like push her head through the wall so she doesn't have to look at it. <laughs> right. For a while there, Max and Nikki were through pairing because absolute chaos. Oh yeah. Yeah. But whenever Max gets a chance to exploit Nikki's super powered yeah. engine. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, Nikki's just the best. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then this week, we had the the who done it. Yeah, yeah. The who the who done it was <laughs> was good. I'm surprised it took them this long to get to a uh, who peed the lake episode. Well, I mean, they constantly have been they haven't been swimming in the lake before. Right. Right. They? No. I don't yeah, think so. and then Gwen even says like, "We can't lose another one. We can't lose another one to the sea." <laughs> Or it wasn't even that she said that. It was that David. Dave, kept, David told her that. Yeah, kept repeating yeah. to yeah. her like, str like I cannot stress enough, yeah. like enough. Was David in this episode? No, David. No, no, no. no but she was like. She mentioned that David yeah. had said, "We can't lose another kid to the sea." Yeah. And that's why he had been dry run teaching Space Kid how to swim. <laughs> which <laughs> what? <laughs> I imagine David was just like like this. Yeah, you just sort of, I mean, that is the first thing you do is you just sort of like, hey, here's the arm motions, but it's like one day of that, and then. Right. Like, you been to swimming lessons? Yeah, when I was super little. I could already oh. swim. They just throw us in pools in Georgia. I mean, that's kind of a thing a lot of a lot of people. It's like all Georgia. over thing. It's <laughs> <laughs> actually why my brother has like I mean, yeah, that's how I first his head can't swim. go underneath water because he got so much water trapped in his ears. Oh man. He had tubes yeah. and then like they ruptured. That sucks. Yeah. It's internal tubes. Yeah, fucking swimming. Swimming. Swim, swim. Swimming and peeing. Swim. We start off with like Max uh, missing breakfast because he yeah. <laughs> overslept for the first time that this week. week. That week. And, uh... <laughs> oh man, everybody's going swimming. Holy shit. But Max. <laughs> Somebody pees the lake. Neil screams it. Everybody gets out of the water. Max Except. is there trying to explain the situation. Oh yeah, except for uh, Magic Kid. What was his name? Harris. Yeah. Yeah. Were you expecting it to be everybody? Oh, he yeah. called it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I. Uh, the fucking who done it? Like, everybody had equal claim to to be to be guilty. Like, right. I, didn't, I didn't expect any of those characters not to do that. Right. There's kind of this like weird base that all of the characters in Camp Camp have of depravity. It's like anybody's and capable of being shit. Anybody's capable. Honestly, I think the one person who's not capable of pissing in the lake is Max. Yeah. I, I think the one person who like wouldn't wouldn't have done it if he was in the lake yeah. would have would have been Max, who considers who considers himself above that. Yeah. <laughs> like Max and Max and David, that's that's their thing that they share is they don't. 
they don't piss in bodies of water. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, David's the other one I could I could see doing that too. Or could not see doing that. Right. Campbell, on the other hand, would just like walk up to him and be like, "It's my morning." And the only cam the way Campbell wouldn't pee in the lake is if he was trying to pee in it so hard that it made it impossible. <laughs> right. <laughs> Do you want to talk about Neil's problem? <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, we like think him. we we're giving him as our, our first like potential uh, f- exonerated person, like completely because. He's, he's talking to Max about his, mm-hmm. his, his condition. Right. Of course, Max doesn't buy it because right. he pretty well, much assumes what we all should. Right. Well, Max does know and does buy the condition, but not that. Also, Neil right. admitted it. Yeah, he was, yeah, yeah. eventually. Not, not when he, it was first brought up. Oh, yeah, no, he was like, I wouldn't do it because of my, my, my oh, condition. My condition? My problem. Like, and yeah, he doesn't question him then because yeah. he just approached him with that, but he remained a suspect. Yeah, because he was like, you're the only person I have not asked. He was like, you're never gonna break me, and then he says like one other thing, and then yeah. he crumbles. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> oh man. This was a very. Uh, there's a lot of uh, premises that sitcoms and animated shows like this with ensemble cast tend mm-hmm. to recreate. Yeah. And this is one of those. Yeah. The the who done it? Like somebody fucked up for everybody. And uh, it's usually a bottle episode when something like this happens, mm-hmm. where like they're all contained in a tight space, but that'd be boring. An animated show, right? Yeah. So it's just a series of questions. Like Max is, becomes the room that they all have to stay in, right? Uh, but Camp Camp is great at doing that, taking a uh, potentially overused trope and making it uh, like rearranging the parts. I think Rooster Teeth does that well in general. Yeah, agree. It's taking something that's really recognizable and has a lot of a lot of very familiar things going on with it and just rearranging them in a way that's nuanced. Right. And uh, in, in the previous episode, uh, the the Nerf clones are like, or, or somebody's saying, I think Gwen is saying to the Nerf clones, we're not doing this. You all think you're the original Nerf thing. It's played <laughs> right. out. Yeah. I don't want to fucking deal with it. And then one of the Nerfs is like, I don't think it's played out at all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, it's just yeah. like throwing some of that awareness on that mm-hmm. just sort of makes it new again. Right, that's, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a great thing about television, is that it can present something that you've seen before in I a f- way that you've never seen. I mean, <laughs> I feel like, yeah, Kim Kat's really good at that. I feel like I first saw them do that whenever they introduced Dolph. Yeah. Yeah. He's the Godwin's Law of characters. Yeah. That's the, like, Woody Allen that came out so weird. <laughs> the Godwin's Law. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh yeah, we never, never talked about the first episode this season. Oh yeah? Yeah, no, we didn't. Which oh. I also don't remember as, as well, because it's been a couple weeks for me right. as well. Yeah. What was it? It was some, it's Campbell. Yeah, oh shit! Yeah, <gasps> we're trying to prove that Campbell's Campbell's a good person. And right. that oh man. people can... Change, change yes. for the David. better. Change for the better. And, and the, the worse. <laughs> Yeah, because oh, Max man. was betting on people don't change. Right. And David was saying that they can. Yeah. And then everyone ended on. Yeah. They can, but. <laughs> Asterisk. <laughs> yeah. Fucking... Not always a good thing. <laughs> oh, man. Fucking. In Campbell's case, I think it's just that he needs to reorganize what he considers to be good. Right. Because he's capable of having goals. Yeah. And having those potentially align with helping people, but it's just that he needs to find the motivation in the actual helping of people. Right. And not in just the, oh, everybody loves me now because I did something good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to keep chasing that. I'm not going to risk too much because then what's the point? He didn't even do anything good in, in the episode, really. He, yeah, he accidentally did. He because... was going to rob a bank. Right. Right. And then ended up stopping a bank robbery. Right. So everyone loved him. Yeah. Could you imagine if that happened, like, to anyone IRL? If they were going to rob a bank and ended up stopping a robbery? Yeah. I bet it's happened, it actually. Yeah. If you know anything cool stories like that, let us know in the comments. Ooh, there's a frog on the window. What's his name? Um, I, I can't hear him. Terrence. Terrence? T- 
Didn't we name the last frog Terrence? Did we? It was Clarence. Yeah, it's too, it's too close. It was too close. Um, Perry. You're saying you got scrubs. Perry Cuomo. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know the uh, frog's name in the description down below. And uh, that's the first word.